الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبت في الله from the paths of khair of goodness and righteousness is that we spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we gain our wealth through lawful means, through the halal, through those means which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and we can't forget that Allah is the one who's given us our rizq. Those ways and means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mashroor, made legislated. Listen to this from the fiqh of the great Imam, Imam Anawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, <clears throat> what he said in his book, Riyadh al-Salihin, he entitled the chapter, Bab Fadl al-Ghani, al-Shakir, wa huwa man akhad al-mal min wajhihi, wa sarafahu fi wujuhihi, al-ma'mur biha. He said, the chapter about the benefit or the greatness <clears throat> of the wealthy person who is thankful. Al-Ghani al-Shakir. The wealthy one who is grateful. And then Imam Anawi, he explained what he meant. And all of this is in the tarjum. This is in the... Uh, in the title of this chapter, he said, "Wahuwa min akhad mal min wajhi, wa sarafahu fi wujuhihi al ma'mur biha." So he explained that the wealthy shakir, the the the, the grateful wealthy person, is the one who takes his wealth from halal sources. Now it's taken it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rizq, from the halal means, of course. And that he spends it in the various ways, because Imam Manoah, he said, وَصَرْفُهُ فِي وُجُوهِهِ Wuju means, very, it's, it's the plural of waj. Waj can mean face, waj can mean various ways or means, so here he said, And that he spends it in the various ways, the various paths that he is commanded with. Then Imam Manoah, we began with the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Layl, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَأَمَّا مَنْ عَطَى وَتَقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَاسِرُهُ Lil Yusra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, and as for the one who gives and is God fearing, what taqa, that means that this person has taqwa Azawajil. That means that this person they follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they fear and stay away and avoid his prohibitions. بِالْحُسْنَى And in this person they spend in goodness, in righteousness, in husna. فَسَنُيَسِرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Then Allah will make easy for him soon. Uh, will make ease for him, grant ease for him. So this is in this ayat as the ulama mentioned that this ayah along with the others that Imam Anoah we mentioned and we won't go through all of them is that it's targhib al-mu'minin bil-infaq fi wujuhi al-khayr ibtigha wajhillahi ta'ala he said that what we learn from this, this verse and the other verses is that it is the encouragement for the believers to spend 
in the various ways of righteousness and goodness and khair seeking the face of Allah the Almighty seeking the pleasure of Allah that's why you spend you spend ibtigha wajhillah seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he also mentioned he said that this uh, this ayat or these verses that they also show the fadl al ghani al taqi ida ahsana badal al mal fi wujuhihi al marghu al marghu al mar al maraghib biha shar'in he said also these verses they show the greatness or the importance of the righteous wealthy person if he strives and spends his wealth in the various ways that the Sharia has made lawful. So that means on khair because the Shara kullaha khair. The Sharia kullaha khair. The Sharia, all of it is good. So that means that if Allah favors us with wealth, that we should spend it in righteousness and khair. Listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa There's two ahadith, but they are just different alfaz or different uh, of the hadith. The first hadith, when Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la hasida illa fil illa fi ithnain o fi ithnatain illa fi ithnatain rajulun atahu Allah malan fasallatahu ala halakatihi fil haq wa rajulun atahu Allah hikmatan fa huwa yaqti biha wa yu'allimuha mutafaqun alayh this is in Bukhari and Muslim and in the next hadith, which is basically very similar in meaning, this slight uh, difference, and we'll talk about it. When Ibn Umar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqal, la hasida illa fi ithnatayn, rajalun atahu wa al-Qur'an, fu huwa yuqumu biha atal layl, o anal layl, wa anal nahar, وَرَجْلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا فَهُوَ يُنْفِقُهُ أَنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ وَأَنَاءَ النَّهَارِ مُتَفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ So in these ahadith, the first hadith, uh, hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه رضي الله تعالى عنهما أو رضي الله تعالى عنه who said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that there is no jealousy or hasid or envy Except in two cases, a man who Allah has given wealth and he spends it to save himself and, you know, give the rights to others. So he spends it in righteousness and he gives it to the, he meets the other people's rights with his wealth. And a man that Allah has given wisdom, given him hikmah, and he uses that hikmah, he dispenses with that hikmah by teaching people it, by teaching with wisdom, with hikmah, with fiqh. We know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives him fiqh, fiddin, he gives him understanding of the religion. So that's a sign that Allah loves a person if they're given hikmah and they're given fiqh, fiddin, and that they teach that knowledge. And they benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bless us to be of those who spend in his cause and those who are blessed with hikmah and those who dispense of that hikmah in a way that pleases Allah. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And in the next hadith, the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, an the Nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we mentioned, he said that there is no envy except in two cases. A man who Allah has given the Qur'an and he practices it during the night and during the day. 
And the man who Allah has given wealth, and he spends it during the day and the night. And this is in Bukhari Muslim. Alhamdulillah, before we get into the Shara of the Shaykh, I want to mention something that's very, very important because this is this is so relevant to us, and may Allah help us and forgive us and guide us. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Rajalun atahu wa al Quran, fuhu yukum biha anan layl wa anan nahar. That one of the people to be jealous of, or that it's permissible to be jealous of, is the man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the man or the woman, of course, who is given the Qur'an, meaning that they memorize the Qur'an, they memorize the Book of Allah, and this applies with Talib al-Ilm as well. The one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the ilm, ilm al nafiyah that they have ilm of, uh, of kitab Allah, with sunnah al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they practice it. Wallah understand. فَهُوَ يُقُمْ بِهَا أَنَا لَيْلٍ وَأَنَا نَهَارٍ so that he, this yukum biha, it could be that he's practicing it, and we would have to look at the English translation to see how they translated it, because there's nothing uh, in the shara. But of course, this includes practicing it, practicing the Quran, because this is what what's meant by the maqsud is not just reading and memorize the Quran. There's ajr in that, but the practice of the Quran is ultimately what we are trying to attain because this is what's going to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if you memorize the Qur'an, yes, you'll receive ajr. And if you recite the Qur'an, yes, you'll receive ajr. Azim, great ajr. But if you don't practice that, then this is a musibah kubra. It's a major, a major problem for you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many shortcomings with regards to practicing kitabillah with sallatu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So this is the one who's given the Quran and they either they practice it and they stand in prayer with the Quran. Meaning that they make tahajid, they, the qiyam al -layl. And nahar, they're reading it and reciting it and practicing it in the day and the night. And a man that Allah has given wealth, and then he spends it during the day and the night. And this is just similar to the other hadith. Letting us know that spending our wealth in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the great acts of ibadah. Doing talib al-ilm and getting hikmah. And if, if Allah favors you with that natija, because so many people, they go on the path of knowledge and they don't receive, it doesn't change their behavior. They don't gain more taqwa. They don't gain even ilm. We know many people. And may Allah forgive us and hope, hopefully we're not of them. I know my shortcomings. But, and I know that Allah has favored me with the opportunity to do talib al I've been to places. I've studied with Mashayat. But my actions are not always illustrating that. My practice is naqs. And we need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need that tawfiq is hidayah. And may Allah grant us and you hidayah. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. And it also shows us the fadl of spending in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spend it in the various paths. And again, although it doesn't mention specifically in this hadith, but what's maqsood is maqsood and mentioned in the other ayat, ayat and so forth, in so many other hadith, is that you spend it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you have the intention to spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhlas lillah. Because if you spend it, and even if you spend a lot of wealth, and you do it in a lot of khair, but it's not seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. It's not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's rather so that the people will see that you are wealthy, or that you're a spendthrift, or you're a philanthropist. Then, that is your reward, is the praise of the people, and you won't get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, depending on your state in the case, you may receive the punishment of Allah and you may go into the fire as the Prophet said about the three who will be judged on the day of judgment, uh, uh, first to be judged on the day of judgment. And one of them, he said, فَأُتِيَ بِهِ فَعَرَفَهُ نِيَعْمُهُ فَعَرَفَهَا فَقَالَ فَمَا مَلْتِ فِيهَا قَالَ 
ما تركت من سبيله أن تحب أن ينفق فيها إلا أن فقت فيها لك قال كذبت ولكنك فعلت لي قال هو جواد فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب لوجهه حتى ألكي في النار so, or, ثم ألكي في النار so this is a very long hadith and a beautiful hadith and a reminder for us and one that should make us cry and in fact I feel even in mentioning this hadith you know that it, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing myself and addressing all of us because we all need sincerity so the Prophet والسلام, said and a man he mentioned this was a third man after the Mujahid and after the the uh, the the one the, the the scholar or the the one who memorized the Quran he said a man who was given a lot of wealth Allah has given him wealth and that was Allah and he uh, was given every kind of wealth it might have been property it might have been animals and and, 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 and physical wealth coins and, and you know all kind of wealth as some people are blessed with that and then he will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask what did you do and the man will say I didn't I, I like this this al-father the hadith I didn't leave off a path that you would uh, love that it be spent in Except that I did it, meaning that he spent in every kind of charity and every kind of khair and a way that you could spend wealth. Maybe supplying the pilgrimage for some people, building uh, uh, buildings for people to live in that even after his death they still will live in and he received sadaqa jariya. Maybe building masajid, places of worship, all kind of khair. <coughs> And then he'll be asked, what did you do? And he'll say, you know, I did all those things. And then Allah will say, you lied. But rather you did it so that the people would say you were a philanthropist. And it was said, فَقَدْ قِيلْ It was said. And then he will be thrown, grabbed by his forelock and dragged in the hellfire. وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ A point, حَبَّتِي فِي اللَّهِ With mention in that hadith, is showing us that our intention is absolutely a must, is imperative that we do these things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that even in the most righteous and the highest deeds that you can do in Islam, like spending in charity and those other deeds, that if your intention is not correct, it can destroy you. Going back to the ahadith, the hadithain that we mentioned, some of the benefits of this hadith that we receive from this hadith is that the person who is truly reward and has the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is, that is truly going to get the highest reward and, and has the, the, the greatness in this life as well as the hereafter is the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given wealth he, and he spent it for the sake of Allah to please Allah and he said that this is the best people from amongst those people who strive in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another benefit of this hadith is that it, these, uh, these hadith show us that also that taqwa, that the servant having taqwa, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and spending in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is of a very high status, and that this taqwa should help them in their spending as well. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.